being here is just so nice. It's such a contrast to the last couple days where it's been, you know, just alone in the desert by myself, not knowing when I'm going to get food or water next, not really, you know, knowing how far I've traveled. There was only one town on the road labeled on the map, so, you know, it looked pretty grim for a while. Not that I was in real danger, but it looked grim for just, you know, people to interact with, any kind of entertainment, so it's just, you know, three days of bumpy road and dirt and sweat. So to be here, things are green, there's people to talk to, there's there's pets to play with, there's little kids, so yeah, I'm definitely grateful for this this break that I have right now. That's what I'm looking for. I'm climbing up this hill for more than two hours coming out of Diradawa. I'm just gonna keep pushing up. There's a big junction in the main highway. I'm gonna stop there, take a break, push on to Harar. This is one of those lame meals that you have by yourself sometimes when you're, you know, cycling by yourself on a budget. <laughs> Tonight I'm choking down some bread, some hard boiled eggs, and probably a package of cookies. Hello. Hi. Let's go for a ride. I've just passed the village of Babile and this is the start of the Valley of Marbles. Well, I've left my bicycle behind. There's a, a man I paid to watch it. He, uh, his teeth are stained green from all the chat he's been chewing. But, I don't know, I don't really have much joy, so. I'm in my biking shoes and carrying this satchel with all my valuable stuff in it. Trying to hold the camera and a water bottle, so. This isn't going very well. So I'm back down from the Valley of Marbles. It was it was okay. Some good scrambling. I mean, it's not that big, but cactus looks like it should be dangerous. But then you get up close and you're like, oh, there's no spikes on it. It's not a problem. Well, there is. They're just so tiny. They're like human hairs that they're almost impossible to see. And you brush against them, you don't even know it, and they really hurt. So now they're stuck in my pants and my shirt sleeves and on the tips of my fingers. So. I'm gonna be picking these out for the next 20 minutes before I hit the bike again. I'm about to kill some of these kids. No joke, I've been hit by three rocks. Two of them in the same spot. That lower back on the right side in the hip. Like, identical spots twice. Pissing me off. I'm back in Harar. I'm in a hotel. I'm going to go see the hyena man tonight. This is about as far east as I'm going to be on the continent, but I'm going to be making progress towards Kilimanjaro tomorrow, so that's a good feeling. Italian mosque. Huh? Italian mosque. Oh yeah, this one's the Italian mosque. Yeah. Yeah. But that. Just get the last Yeah. 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 <laughs> Watch out, guys.
<laughs> That's a lot of camel meat. Yeah, you know the other hyena is coming? Yeah. Like, you now the first thing I'll show you. Okay. Yeah. They start the first feeding. Yeah. How? It's great. It's quite the contrast up here now that I'm up a bit higher in elevation. The, there's a lot more vegetation and you know, more towns, more life, everything. <laughs> Good. Yeah. No problem. No problem. Because I was coming into this town, I got really hungry, and then my fingers started to tingle, and then my face started to go numb. And I was actually going over this hill, so I'm breathing. I'm, I'm breathing really hard, like, and then my face kind of stuck in that position kind of freaked me out a little bit. Okay, it's the morning of day 11. It's about six in the morning and <laughs> I woke up and my left eye is really swollen and I have no idea why. This road goes downhill a bit more out into the plains, and finally it's the end of the Amhar Mountains. Hopefully I get to Addis by the end of tomorrow. It's a good sight right now. Six, seven, seven or eight spokes are broken. And look at that, that whole part of the hub here. There's just nothing. I'm to Addis Ababa Ehedalo. So, <laughs> okay. Well, there's my bicycle going on the roof. It is beyond field repair. I'll have to repair it in Addis. I'm, I'm clocking the kilometers, so I'm gonna come back to this spot eventually and start again from there. But for now, I just have to get this repaired. I can't go any further the way the bike is, so that's just how it goes sometimes. Do you have rest too far today in Addis? Yeah, uh, if I can repair today, good. But maybe, maybe a couple days. Yeah. Maybe two, two, days, two days, three days. Yeah. yeah. And then, because uh, I also need a new visa uh -huh. for Kenya. For Kenya. Yeah, yeah, so I can do that on Monday. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, I'm back in Addis Ababa a day or two earlier than I planned because of the little breakdown I had on the side of the road. Uh, I <laughs> I can't even tell you what happened. I have never seen anything like this. Twelve spokes broke all at the same time. This all happened within about half a second and the wheel jerked to one side and locked up inside the frame. It just pinched itself and came to a screeching halt. This should have collapsed underneath me. I mean look. There's nothing on this side. This is all completely open space. How this didn't fall and take me with it, I have no idea. Look at the back side of this spoke. It's broken, but it stayed in place. 13. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. 14. 
15 new spokes. I had to remove the cassette. So I did that and I actually also replaced the bearings and put new bearing grease inside the rear axle. So, you know, I've only gone about 500 kilometers, but when you put the, the tires side by side, you can see that the rear tire is just worn down significantly more than the front tires.